29th of October 1944, the liberation of the Netherlands is ongoing, all the while the invasion of Germany and the march to Berlin are also taking place. It has roughly been one month since the failure of Operation Market Garden. This operation focused on obtaining key bridges and cross points near the corridor of Eindhoven and Arnhem. Roughly 16 kilometers west sits Breda, another town amongst many. But unlike many cities liberated in the area, it was spared most of the horrors of war. No dreadful destruction or bloody conflict. Yet, almost 80 years later, the citizens of Breda still remember and honor the fallen soldiers. The soldiers that fought for our freedom. We will follow the journey of Major General Stanislav Maszek and the 1st Polish Armored Division as they move throughout Western Europe. But let's backtrack, let's go back, all the way back to the start of the war in 1939. On the first day of September 1939, German troops invaded the Republic of Poland. It is stated to be the beginning of World War II. The Poles were outmatched by the German army with pretty much everything. As if the situation wasn't dire enough for the Poles, the invasion was part of the newly signed Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, a non-aggression treaty between the USSR and Germany. In it was also decided that the Soviet Union was to invade Poland from the east and gain some land as compensation for their help. On the 17th of September, the Soviets invaded. Poland was at this point falling apart. Both Germans and Soviet troops massacred Polish towns and cities. But the Poles managed to keep on fighting until the bitter end, with resistance fully crumbling on the 6th of October 1939 when the Polish government surrendered. Altogether, roughly 200,000 Polish citizens were killed, with many more suffering long after the fighting was ended. Around 65,000 Polish soldiers died defending their home, with many more being taken prisoner. But there were still little sparks of resistance. A large number of Polish soldiers managed to escape to neutral countries, many of which were determined and motivated to continue the fight against the Germans. But this time, they wouldn't fight alone. They would seek help to train and fight alongside the Allies. The soldiers who went through hell mainly went to Allied territories such as Great Britain and France. There they could recover before making their next moves. But it wasn't long before the fall of France happened, which led to pretty much all the Poles fleeing to Britain. On the British mainland, they were more than pleased with the extra support of the Poles. However, these soldiers needed training and equipment. It is often overlooked how much of an impact the Poles had on the war. They had the fourth largest armed forces, even surpassing France. These were divided into the West Polish Army, fighting with the English forces, and the Eastern Polish Army, fighting alongside the Red Army in the East. While they were never the best friends, after Operation Barbarossa, Soviet and Polish troops aided each other in battle against the Germans. Hard to believe, but it's the truth. For this video, we will focus on the West Polish Army, mainly the land forces, and we shall follow the trails of the 1st Polish Armored Division and their comrades. During February of 1942, in the humble little town of Doon, Scotland, the Polish 1st Armored Division was created. At the head of it all was Major General Stanislav Marczak. Marczak was an incredibly talented and experienced general. He had previously fought in World War I and afterwards he was the commander of the Polish 10th Cavalry Brigade. This was one of the most powerful mechanized brigades of Poland during the 1939 invasion. The group was active from 1937 up to Poland's surrender. But Marczak alongside many of its subordinate officers got away. Via Hungary he managed to escape to France. While in France he fought the Germans again until France's defeat. He then made his way to Gibraltar where he eventually took the route to Britain. The newly created Polish 1st Armored Division was organized on the British Armored Division model. And they were supplied with British equipment ranging from uniforms and weapons all the way up to armored vehicles. For the next two years Marczak and his men trained in Scotland. They were initially trained in the Crusader, a British cruiser tank. The Crusader was a light and swift vehicle. It was classified as a cruiser tank, which is the British equivalent of a medium tank. They were supposed to be mobile and drive deep into enemy territory. The Crusader was lightly armored and had to use its speed as protection. However, at the end of 1943 and early 1944, these were replaced by the classic Sherman tank and the British Cromwell tank. The M4 Sherman was an American medium tank. It was a jack of all trades, but master of none. It was the workhorse of the American army throughout World War II, being upgunned into the British Sherman Firefly using the lethal 17 pounder, which was also used by the Polish division. The Cromwell was the successor to the Crusader, being a more modernized version of it. By this point in time, the division was trading alongside the 4th Canadian Armored Division. Eyes were now focused on the next move. 
one which would change everything. On the 6th of June 1944, Operation Overlord would kick off. The largest amphibious landing in human history, with more than 150,000 men landing on the shores of Normandy. The entire operation was incredibly vigilant and risky, but the Allies managed to pull it off. By the end of July, the 1st Armored Division of Magic had been transferred to Normandy, with some of the final elements arriving on the 1st of August in Aromanches. The unit was attached to the 1st Canadian Army as part of the 21st Army Group. It wasn't until the 8th of August that the division saw its first action. It joined in during Operation Totalize in the fighting around Caen and Valais. The division suffered from friendly fire incidents by Allied aircraft, but the Poles performed well and were able to take care of numerous German Army and SS divisions. At the pocket of Valais, Maciek Division had the crucial job of closing the pocket at the escape route of the trapped German divisions. Alongside the 2nd Polish Armored Regiment and numerous smaller forces, they held off fierce German counterattacks trying to break through. For 48 hours they withstood hefty attacks from fleeing Panzer divisions while being low on supplies. While Operation Totalize would result in Allied victory, it, like everything else during the war, came with a prize. That prize was that around 450 soldiers were killed. A further 1500 more were wounded and 150 soldiers went missing during these two intense weeks of fighting. With Operation Overlord running its course and the Allies breaking out of Normandy, the Polish division continues to advance. It pursued the Germans along the coast of the English Channel before they would march inland to Belgium. Some of the significant liberations include the liberation of Tielt, Rousselare and Ghent. General Maciek had become revered at this point with him being promoted and receiving many rewards. The division now stood at the gates of the Netherlands. After the Allies crossed the border at Baarle Nassau, the division led by Maciek halted at Alphen, a tiny town roughly 20 kilometers away from Breda. The troops stopped their advance for roughly three weeks. After that, the Poles joined in on Operation Peasant. This offensive was put into action after the failure of Operation Market Garden. With this operation, the Allies would liberate the entire province of North Brabant. The Poles were only a piece of the puzzle, as British and Canadian troops were also involved in the fighting. On the early morning of the 27th of October 1944, Polish infantry, supported by tanks, moved through German minefields. On the early morning of the 29th, the clash began. The Germans made use of heavy artillery fire, all the while the Poles fought off a counterattack at the town Dorst. A simple outflanking maneuver will provide the Poles to quickly capture the town of Breda, as the German division stationed there retreated further north. Because the Poles moved fast, Breda was spared severe fighting and destruction, a miracle which could not be said for the many other towns in the area. Maciek had become revered by the town. He always said to his men that the Dutch citizens of Breda are our friends, and you should treat them very carefully. Maciek wanted to make sure he didn't damage the old town, so he made very little use of heavy equipment. Maciek instead chose to send mainly infantry into the city and take care of any Germans who may be hiding in the city. This of course led to a very strong and special bond between the commander Maciek and the town of Breda. After a petition with over 40,000 signatures, Maciek was made an honorary Dutch citizen. While the liberation of Breda went smoothly, nearby cities proved difficult. British forces engaged in heavy fighting near Rosendaal, while the Canadians are on their way to liberate Bergen op Zoom. But at the start of November 1944, Operation Passion concluded and resulted in Allied victory. They had at this point liberated even more cities such as Tilburg and Sethogenbosch, and they had also further secured the port of Antwerp. Shortly after the liberation, the Polish 1st Armored Division was quartered in Breda for the winter. But the war was not over yet, and the Poles knew that more towns were desperately waiting to be liberated. They guarded a sector around Moerdijk near the Rhine River until in early 1945 they were transferred to the province of Overijssel. From there they continued their journey through the Netherlands with Allied forces along the Dutch-German border. They mainly liberated the eastern parts of the provinces Drenthe and Groningen, which include the cities Almelo, Emmen and Veendam. However, the journey of Maciek and his comrades hasn't ended yet. Shortly after their adventures in the Netherlands, the division moved into Germany. The division's finest hour came shortly after that. In April 1945, Maciek's division had been fighting in the area of Emsland. They would eventually win the fight and capture the German Kriegsmarine naval base in Wilhelmshaven, which contained many soldiers and some 200 vessels of the Kriegsmarine. Maciek would continue to command the division all the way up to its dismantlement in 1947. With the war in Europe over, the journey of the Black Devils had come to an end, and at its height, the division got to a peak of 18,000 soldiers. 
Maciek, after the war, had a rough life. At first he wanted to return to Poland, however this was not possible due to the newly installed communist government who stripped his citizenship. He left the army in September 1948, but the British government denied him any general's pension, as he had not been a member of the British Armed Forces. As a result of that, Maciek worked as a barman at the hotel until the 1960s. Furthermore, he also had to take care of his daughter, who was chronologically ill. She required costly treatment and Maciek already was in a difficult financial situation. However, the Dutch came to help. In the years after the war, the Poles decided to further cement their friendship with the good citizens of Breda. Most noticeably, they gifted a German Panther tank, which to this day is still on display in the Wilhelmina Park in Breda. The Panther tank in question is the early and rare Ausführung D-model. The Dutch gave Maciek in secret an indexed general's pension. The Dutch did not want this news to leak out though, as the Cold War was ongoing and this could strain diplomatic relations with the Eastern Bloc. The Dutch were incredibly grateful to Maciek and he himself visited it from time to time. In 1989 he would finally get some respect for his noble actions, as the last Polish communist government issued an apology to the general. In 1994 he was awarded the highest state decoration, the Order of the White Eagle. At the end of the same year, Maciek died at the age of 102. His last wish was to be buried at the Polish military cemetery in Breda, amongst his brave and noble soldiers who once fought alongside him. A special memorial was constructed for him and each year large numbers of both Dutchies and Poles come over to give Maciek and his men the respect they always deserved, but got so incredibly late. As a fun side note, Maciek's name means poppy in Polish. In an effort to tribute to Fallen, the local football slash soccer club Nak Breda has published their new design for the upcoming uniform. One of the shirts contains the names of the fallen Polish soldiers, those who fought for our freedom. On the other, the soldiers themselves can be seen. It's a way to honor them, a way of celebrating the 80 year anniversary of the liberation of Breda. Many of the incredible courageous soldiers may be gone, but they shall never be forgotten. And with that, there's nothing else to say. I hope you guys all enjoyed this rather unique and different video. I certainly enjoyed doing the research and production of it. If you did enjoy it as well, feel free to subscribe, like and share this video and hopefully I'll be seeing you all in the next one. Dovi Jenna!